Hey everybody, my name is Adrian Fields and I'm an expat entrepreneur who is in the process of moving to Lisbon. In this video today, I want to tell you about the real estate market here in Lisbon, the process that I've been going through to find a new home, and what is the general state of the rental market right now in the end of 2022 going into 2023 as I am filming this in the actually, like it's a few days until Christmas, so the year is almost over. And let's get right into it. The real estate market in Lisbon over the last few years has become so insane. The prices have jumped up a lot. It's become really competitive. There's just a lot of demand and not very much inventory. Lisbon has just become like the hot spot to be over the last few years. And I think that the secret is really out that this is such a cool city that people really want to move to, especially a lot of older Americans who are retirees or whatever are not happy with life in America and want to just have a different kind of more relaxed, laid back European lifestyle. So this has actually increased the prices quite a lot. A lot of these foreigners coming in with money and quite frankly, it's displaced a lot of the younger actual Portuguese people who can't even afford to live in the center of Lisbon anymore and are now on the outskirts. So I came here with the idea of around a 20,000 euro a year budget for an apartment. I was hoping to find a one Actually, I was really hoping to find a two bedroom apartment because I want to make one of the bedrooms into my office since I work from home and also the fact that I'm moving from Bali where I've been living in a three bedroom, three bathroom villa with a pool and a garden for the last two years makes it quite hard to downsize to something smaller than a two bedroom. So I started my search here for an apartment as basically as soon as I got here. One of the very first things I did was I went on Facebook in one of the expat groups for Lisbon and I asked if someone had a recommendation for a real estate agent and I got in touch with this woman named Philippa who works for Remax and while being in touch with her and deciding okay I'm going to work with this person I also scoured every day the listings on Idealista which is a website with real estate listings for both purchase and rental. So even though Philippa was really supposed to be like scouring the listings for me, I ended up doing basically all the work for myself because this was important to me and it's rare that someone is going to work as hard as you will. So every morning I would check Idealista within the zone of where I wanted to live and within my budget and check every day for these new listings and then immediately send them to Philippa and her team to reach out because I just thought, all right, well, it'll be easier if I have an agent working on my behalf who speaks the language and who maybe can get things done in a better way than I could just by myself if I'm trying to like follow up with all of these people. Now, the way that it worked with Philippa, this real estate agent, um, who's actually half Canadian, half uh, Portuguese, so she speaks perfect English, which is actually a trait of a lot of people here in Portugal uh, as a side note, but anyway, she said that to have the best success the way that she works is that me as the renter pays her commission which is equivalent to one month of rent rather than having it come from the landlord side or from the landlord agent side and she said that that increases the chances of me actually getting a place because again it's so competitive so i'm going to get more into talking about how competitive it is and show you the places that i visited and the one that I'm supposed to be signing a contract for that just came through today, but we still have a few negotiation points. So here's the first apartment. Uh, today is quite a crisp, sunny day here in Lisbon, and it's quite exciting because I'm going to see the very first apartment that I'm considering for long-term rental. This apartment is in the neighborhood of Santos Bica, which is quite a cool, trendy area with a lot of shops and restaurants and just where you want to be, basically. And so yeah, this is the very first place that I'm looking at. It's a one bedroom kind of cool loft style place. It looks really interesting on the pictures on Idealista, which is a website that has a lot of real estate options. And it is for 1600 euros a month. So I'm gonna check it out and see how it is and take you along with me. This apartment was located on a pedestrian only access street. I walked by the front a few times because there was no sign marking the entrance. It was a second floor walk up, but the stairs were perilous and dark. The apartment had been recently renovated, but it wasn't exactly user friendly. The only bathroom was downstairs next to the kitchen while it had a lofted bedroom, meaning you'd have to go downstairs to wash. Overall, it felt claustrophobic, and I hit my head going up the stairs as the loft ceiling was so low. Ah. Oh. 
The upstairs bedroom also had a strange layout. While it was cool and industrial feeling, it would be better for a short Airbnb visit than as an actual home where the functionality or lack thereof would get tiring quickly. And there was no way I could live with this one measly clothes rack either. No, pas du tout. I've just left this apartment viewing and I wanted to give my impressions right after. So I think it's cool. I think that it's unique. It's quirky, but ultimately I don't think that it's really a great fit for me because it just feels super claustrophobic with low ceilings and especially that entrance with the really dark, narrow and steep stairs. And then even, you know, when I went up to the lofted bedroom area, I hit my head on the ceiling because it's so low. And then also the fact that uh, the bathroom is downstairs, but, you know, the lofted bedroom being upstairs just makes it kind of weird and not so user-friendly to live. Again, I think like I could do a month there and it would be cool and fun, but more than that, I would really start to get probably depressed just with the layout of the space. And again, those stairs I feel like would be really treacherous. You're coming back after drinking or with shopping bags or whatever. It's just, I want something that's a bit more clean, um, more modern, more, you know, like, with a nice layout, whatever. So again, that was just the very first place that I've seen so far. And Filippa, my real estate agent who's looking for me, um, has assured me that as of next week, you know, we'll be seeing a lot more places. So, you know, fingers crossed that I find something because I love that particular neighborhood. It was in a fantastic location, but just, you know, the apartment itself was not exactly up to what I'm looking for. All right, I'm about to go out now to see the second apartment. This one is probably over my budget, it's 2,500 euros a month, but it has these amazing views and it's in a very cool area of town, but it also overlooks the train track. So I'm gonna show you all of that. Uh, let's head out now. I'm not feeling very well, which is why I'm wearing my glasses today. This is the first time I'm even leaving the house. It's 5 p.m. basically, um, coming down with something. But anyway, we've gotta go on, the show must go on with this apartment search because honestly, it's really hard. The stuff that comes up on Idealista, like people don't respond to the telephone or things are gone so quickly. So you just have to go and see as many places as possible and hope that you get lucky. So that's what we're gonna do today. This apartment was also in Santos, right by the train terminal and the river. Forgive the fact that I'm showing you this apartment in reverse as the tenant was there, which made it really awkward to film. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom with a big yet cozy living room and a giant kitchen. It had views of the river and the town. I felt like I would really enjoy living in that space. The visit itself was a bit overwhelming because the tenant was actually an artist and you can see he just has an enormous amount of artwork all over the place, like on the walls, in the hallway, everything was just totally packed. But again, look at this kitchen. I mean, it's gigantic. It's an actual space to eat in the kitchen and two sinks and just really nice. I mean, look at the beautiful details of all of this countertop space and this was the view as well from the balcony you can see to the right side is the river and again this was the actual second bedroom this is the guest room which i would make into a guest room slash office so really big really spacious and again just overwhelming with how much stuff this guy had all right well i really liked the second apartment i mean i didn't film that much because it was a little bit awkward considering that the man who was residing in the apartment was actually present during my visit so it felt like it was quite intrusive because also all of his furniture and stuff was there and i felt like all right this is not right for me to like film his house and his personal things so i tried to be like very you know um discreet in my filming but the building was gorgeous i mean it was right on the riverfront and it was a very kind of um, luxurious type of building. Like it had an elevator, it just felt very grand. It had this big staircase and then each apartment had these double open doors. So everything about it kind of felt really high class. And as you could see from the video, um, I mean, the finishing was nice. It had this gigantic kitchen. It had really high ceilings. It had amazing views. I mean, it was really nice. And I went home thinking, I really, really like this apartment. Maybe I want to put an offer on it, but it was above my budget. I mean, I told Philippa that I wanted to spend around 20,000 euros a year, and this place was 2,500 euros a month. And the thing is, what made it so shockingly expensive when I put all the numbers together was that it would also be an extra 5,000 euros as, 
as a security deposit because that would be two months rent. But then in addition, I would be paying Philippa 2,500 euros. So that would be an extra 7,500 euros in addition to the 2,500 times 12. So at this point we, were, we got to like a total of 37,500 euros for the first year. And I just thought that's insane. I don't wanna pay that much. That's literally almost four villas of my villa in Bali for a yearly rent. So I basically came to my senses because I knew that it would stress me out way too much to pay that much. And frankly, nobody should be paying that much for a rental. Like if you have 37,500 euros, better to like put down a deposit on a, a small house, you know, then pay that for a year's rent. So ultimately I decided, all right, we're gonna pass on that one. And it was back to the drawing board, back to Idealista to try to find more places. All right, today I'm now going to see the third apartment that I've seen. I was actually supposed to see two today, but the first one, the rental market is so crazy here that today was the first day they were doing visits. The first person came to visit, put down an offer, and then it was finished. It was already gone. So things are just so competitive here. If you want something, you have to move super fast the apartment that i'm seeing today is in a really nice area of town um, by the principe real and by the botanical garden so this one i think is 105 uh, meters squared i'm pretty sure it's a one bedroom or something i don't know i don't remember all the details because i've been looking every single day on the real estate website to try to find stuff and it's all kind of getting mixed up in my head but hopefully, you know, this place will be good. And if I like it, I cannot hesitate. I basically need to put down the money right now to secure it. So let's go check it out. And fingers crossed, we find a gem that nobody else has snatched away. This apartment was in Principe Real, a privileged neighborhood right next to the Botanical Gardens. It was also a walk up on the second floor, but these stairs were much more manageable and there was only one apartment per floor. Inside, it was a totally open living area that felt spacious, but also cozy. Importantly for me, it actually got a decent amount of light. You can see these three windows here. I just can't live in a dark space. It's super depressing to me. And the kitchen was nice being that it was open and recently remodeled and renovated. And you can just see how everything flows. Okay, this place actually has a bathtub, which I did not realize, and it's so spacious. Look at all of this. You can actually sit here in front of the, the mirror vanity. It has a bidet, it has the toilet, and just like, it's actually a very spacious bathroom with the heated towel rack. Wow, okay, wasn't expecting that. Oh, is this is a walk-in closet? Yeah, this yeah. just gets better and better. I don't know why I didn't notice from the photos or from the listing that it had all of this. Stop. The not so clear. No, it wasn't good at no. all. Which is actually better because I'm sure otherwise there would be so many people wanting this space if they knew. Okay, so rather now, a nice here, size. Adrian, sorry. Here it's what I told you. This small bed goes away. The big bed, I don't know what this cabinet stays. This yeah, well, that's in built the house. into the wall, yeah. right? So this uh part here all probably goes uh, away also. Okay, and it has a little balcony here. A little balcony here in the back. Oh, cute, yeah, you know, with the little... The laundry Oh, wow, okay, section. a separate little laundry yeah. room. Lovely. Okay. Sunrise, this direction. So in, you have yeah. the sun going up until two o'clock, more or less you have sun here, then the other side. Okay. That's a nice sized bedroom as well. You can yeah, have a nice TV. Yeah. 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 <sighs> How does this open? Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I see from like this. Okay, yeah. a lot of storage space for clothes. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Oh. Excuse me. This is the second bedroom. Okay, I would make this into probably my office. Yeah, an office, yeah. Are they going to take off this wallpaper? Yeah, no problem. Okay. All right, so this apartment I fell in love with right away. I mean, it had everything that I was looking for. It was spacious. It had a kind of modern living with the kitchen that flowed into the living room that flowed into a dining room. It had a walk-in closet, which I couldn't believe. And also it had a giant bathroom with that bathtub. Now, I've said this before in other videos, but I love, love, love taking baths. I even said to Philippa in the very beginning, if we can find an apartment with a bathtub, that would be fantastic. That's like my, you know, my dream amenity or whatever. I just, I mean, I take baths almost every day. 
So the fact that I had a bathtub was a huge plus. And then the fact also that it was a two bedroom uh, with the second smaller bedroom that I could convert perfectly into an office, had a cute little tiny outdoor deck area that even had a little view, like it was just perfect. And the price was right too. So it was listed for 1,750 euros a month. And because I really wanted this apartment, as soon as that visit was over, actually even before the visit was over, I contacted Philippa and I said, please let's move forward with an offer on this place that is aggressive because I don't want it to be pulled out from under me. I mean, the, again, the market was so competitive that things would just go like this. Actually, this place was listed on ID Lista. That's how I found it. And then within like two hours, it was taken off the website because the listing agent had been inundated, I think, with, he said, something like 50 calls within that two hour period. And the reason that I was actually even able to visit it was because it was from a listing agent who also worked for Remax. So since Philippa works for Remax, she was able to contact this guy and get me in. Otherwise, I would not have been able to see this apartment. So we made an offer and Philippa advised that I offer a little bit above asking. So I offered 1800 euros a month and I also offered three months down plus four months as a deposit. But the way that I talked to Philippa about this and it seemed like we were in agreement until I got the contract this morning was that those deposits would be used towards my rent. Now there's this apparently like law in Portugal that you can't offer more than three months down as rent. Um, I guess because they don't want the market to just be like so insane that most people can't afford it. And so Philippe had advised, well, if you put more as a deposit, then maybe, you know, she can use it. I don't know. But the point is, I just got the first draft of the contract this morning and I'm looking at it and I'm like, wait, what the hell? This is telling me I put down three months plus uh, four months deposit and then I start paying uh, and actually then addition, I'm remembering now all of the terms, but in addition, I would pay five months in April and I structured it that way because by that time I should have hopefully my residency visa. But then even after that, then by September, I would be paying monthly. So I'm like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. She's counting four months as an actual deposit. I'm not going to put down 7,200 euros as a deposit that just sits in her bank account. Like it didn't even have like such nice furniture. I mean, probably all the furniture together is worth a thousand euros. So that's outrageous. And uh, so we're still having to go back and forth about that um, because I do not want to put such a gigantic deposit. I will not put more than two months down. So it's a bit, you know, frustrating because I'm putting so much money down. Like I was prepared to pay uh, like around 13,000 euros as an initial upfront payment of those three months plus an extra four, which was supposed to be like the deposit plus more months. And then by April pay another like 9,000 euros. So, I mean, most people cannot afford to do that who are, I mean, who are like regular people with a job. I mean, I do have liquidity. I'm able to do that. But again, I want it to be structured in a fair way. Like that's just not fair to have to pay this much and to have to have that much money tied up in um, a deposit. Also, in addition to that, I offered a contract for two years. The way that rental contracts here work is that you only have to stay, I think it's like one third of the contract, but then also give uh, four months notice. So for example, if you had a one year contract, you would only actually be obligated to stay up to uh, like seven months, I think something like that. And with a two year contract, it comes out to one year. So even though it's a two year contract, you're actually only obligated to one year. Another thing with the rentals here is that they cannot raise your yearly rent, I think more than like a certain percent, which is really small, like maybe around 2%. So it's great to lock in a place at a good price and you can end up staying there. Now, as I said, the rental market has just become so competitive and so hot. The listing agent who showed me this apartment had told me that the same apartment um, when it came up last time, when it was on the market last for rent about three or four years ago, it was on the market for six months and the price was a lot lower than 1800 and now it was rented in literally one day. I mean, he had one day of visits. I was a second visit. I put an offer. Like, that's just how fast now things are moving here. Um, it's just crazy. I mean, it's similar in Bali as well with how, <laughs> how much the rents have risen post COVID especially. And I guess this is just like a worldwide phenomenon right now. Renters are getting squeezed just about everywhere that's worth living. So 
it's a bit stressful to be honest. I don't know um, what Philippe is going to come back with. Like we still need to negotiate further this contract, but if all you know goes forward and they are amenable to um, changing it, you know, so that I'm not putting down 7,200 euros as a deposit, then I would be signing, I would be putting down the money. And that really is the kind of point of no return for me that I'm actually going to move to Portugal because up until this point, I could always, you know, make a U-turn, just decide, oh, forget it. I'm going to go back to Bali and not pursue, you know, this, this path because I haven't actually really done anything that is irreversible up to this point. I still have to go back to Bali and apply for the residency visa here. But once I've put down, you know, 13, 14,000 euros, it's like, all right, well, I need to get back here and I want to start living in that apartment. So that is the situation. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it gave you some insight. Uh, if you are planning to move here, just be aware that it is super competitive. You need to come with a good amount of money. Um, and of course, they also asked me to, prov to prove my financial capability for the rental. And it was just a lot more due diligence and hustle than I ever had to do in Bali, where I've never paid a security deposit in Bali in the four years that I've lived there. So yeah, very different here in Europe. But that being said, fingers crossed that I get this apartment and that I'm not paying a huge deposit because I will legit walk away if that's the case. And I will update you guys once I have the keys and show you around and I can't wait to decorate it and start my whole European life. So thanks for watching and until the next time, take care and I'll see you later.